Hello and welcome back. This is Arise Boax. You are watching episode three of Getting Started with Houdini. And in this section, I wanted to talk about making copies, orienting the copies, because possibly you have already tried to make copies and uh, you know distribute them in some sort of arrangement, but maybe you have run into some problems. So let's discuss just that. Again, as per usual, I'll start with the tab, start typing geometry. Whoa, what is going on? Okay, start typing geometry, enter, enter. Okay, um, now the first thing I want you to do and what we will do is create a circle. So this circle represents um, basically the circle that we will be copying on to after I show you another way of making copies. So first of all, uh, let's say uh, we start typing copy S as for copy stamp and uh, let's create a box. So we have a box. I will just uh, make it renderable and we go to um, connect it to the copy and we see the copy stamp. Now, this is how copying usually is done in other applications like Modo, 3ds Max, Maya, you name it. So what is happening is that we can define how much of mm, offset in the copying will be done to our geometry, right? Uh, maybe it will get rotated as well as it gets copied, like, let's say like that. Uh, we define the number of copies and as you can see, we indeed do have um, well, as the name suggests, copies, uh, copy stamping, and yada yada. So this is, um, I would say, the classic way of doing that, right? Um, if we pre-transform our box and move it away, you can see that our copies mm, start to behave differently just because copying evaluates everything uh, based on the zero. Um, zero, zero, zero coordinates. And if we move our geometry away, it's not, um, it starts to evaluate based on, like, it's, it looks at zero and says, aha, uh -huh, our box is here. So um, if we are making box cumulatively transforming, it means that it will move relative to the initial state of the box. So there you go. Let's delete this. Now, the better way of copying and the Houdini way, so to speak, uh, would be copying our geometry onto points. Now, it comes with huge advantages and with a caveat, because we have to orient our geometry sort of by hand, but you will see what I'm talking about in a second. Okay, so uh, we have our circle. I'll just um, make the box uh, with this pinkish flag. That means that we will know what is happening with the wireframe. But I will make the circle larger, okay? And next up, I would say... So we have a selection. We can make it a polygon. We can make a NURBS curve, which is, um, I would say, preferable in my case. To convert our NURBS curve into a polygonal representation of... Um, of the curve, uh, we can do a resample. So again, top re a re r e s a uh, shift enter, and we get the resample. So I will enable the uh, showing of the points. Now, as you can see, there is a bit too much points. I mean, depends on what's your goal here, but to me personally, it's a bit too much. So uh, I will disable the maximum segment length and instead enable the maximum segments. And as you can see, it immediately starts. Well. What we, what we want it to do, right? Uh, it starts to resample the segment, the ideal representation of a circle into the polygonal, which is a bit more faceted, but it will be very useful for our copies. Now, next up, uh, I'll tap the copy to points. And uh, as per usual, the geometry is on the left, uh, the targeted points is on the right. So we actually make uh, kind of clean this up a little bit. And if we now look at our copy to points, and I will disable the points, um, we can see that our boxes are oriented, well, basically the same way. And it's not exactly sometimes preferable way of 
you know, orienting our geometry onto the copies. In our case, I want them to look to the center of our um, of our circle that they create. So to do that, we have to go and uh, make the poly frame and drop it after the resample. Now, nothing will change, uh, but let's dive inside the poly frame and see what it actually does. Now, as you can see, before we made a poly frame, we can inspect our uh, our node and our geometry by uh, clicking the eye icon or just by middle hold down middle mouse button on the node. So you can see that there is one point attribute that is P, uh, which is, stands for position. And when we have the polyframe, there are three point attributes. Normal, tangent U, and P as for position. Now, if we look you know, uh, in our resample and we enable re, uh, the show, so it shows our normals, the point normals, uh, they are facing down and the normal of the primitives, basically it faces down as well. Now, this is happening because it's uh, reversed once more, but you kind of see what's happening, right? They are just facing down. And when polyframe is enabled, we now have it, new normals uh, that are blue because they now have the blue and they are for primitives. Now, the thing is, um, it computes the normals by the actual normal. Now, normal is the direction that the face or vertex or point is looking at. But what we want to do is have our normals. And by the way, when you copy to points, the copies get oriented how the normals were oriented. Now, if we want them to look um, inside our circle, the copied boxes look inside our circle, we need to write normals as if they were tangents. So I will disable the normal name N and instead writes N, which stands for a normal attribute in Houdini in the tangent. And if I now press enter, voila, our copies are oriented as we wanted them to be. So there you go. You can compute the tangent and write them as the normal. This is important uh, in Houdini, the very fact that you can operate any attribute you want and write that or overwrite any attributes that you need or create it at your, at your own leisure, so to speak. Um, I think we will talk about, a bit about this more when we will be tackling the problem of attributes in, um, in the subsection or maybe in another workshop. I think I will create another workshop just for attributes and attribute fobs. But for now, you just want to know that the polyframe creates the tangent and you can write it as a normal. Now, this is, um, this is kind of interesting. Why? Because we can now make a number of copies that we want based on the number of segments that we have. Uh, this is not just for a circle. We can create a line and do the same thing. Copy it here. And now we have a line. Actually, I want it to transform first. So um, let's see, uh, length a bit more. I'll enable the showcase of the points. Let's say we have like four points. And now as you can see, we have four copies of our box. Now if we just rotate it. I think we should rotate it in the, oh, in the X. Yep. So if we rotate it at 90 degrees, uh, we now have a perfect, um, the perfect lineup of our boxes. Okay, this is fine. Now, uh, why would we want to do this with a line? Because now we can operate uh, with the line as, as how we want. So if I select, uh, press S, press 2, select this, um, and press T to move it around. As you can see, now if I resample, 
like here. Um, actually, let's make it NURBS. So again, what I did is I made it as a NURBS. So it's a mathematical representation of the thing. And when I edited the, the points, it's not just having this harsh angle, it actually has this nice curvature. And then I resampled it, again, it's a maximum segments, as you can see. We now have our boxes copied. Again, if we do the polyframe, where is it? Uh, polyframe, again, writes normals as normals, uh, tangents as normals, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, we have our boxes oriented pretty much perfectly. And just for the sake of the um, illustration, I drop the transform node, scale it a bit down, and there you go. So now, what's interesting about this setup, I'll make the length a bit, a bit longer, so it kind of illustrates my point a bit better. Now, if I um, start moving these points around, it automatically makes the makes the recompute of all the orientation of the boxes as you might want it them to be. So there we go. Uh, of course, we can increase the number of segments. And even so, what is more interesting, if we actually make it a maximum segment length, it will force it to recompute the number of boxes. So they kind of have the same um, the same distance between the boxes. As you can see, this is really interesting, uh, very useful for procedural modeling that we'll be using for our uh, sort of final project of uh, introduction to Houdini, which uh, I think will be some sort of a space lift or a space shipyard or something, where we'll be we will be utilizing all these methods of making copies. Okay, the final thing about the orientation and the copies I wanted to show you is uh, copying on the scattered objects. Um, so let, let's start with a sphere, because sphere is a perfect candidate for scattering. And you will see what I'm talking about in just a second. Let's create a polygon. Frequency is not really matter. Let's say five, because whatever. Uh, next up, uh, scatter node that we already know. And we will scatter the copies onto our... I mean, first, we'll scatter, of course, just the points that we will be copying onto. Okay, I'll enable the points. Uh, let's say, I don't know, 46. Uh, I'll just um, alt drag left mouse this box. And now we CTP stands for copy to points. Um, geometry to copy is the box and the points to copy to will be the scatter. Now, as you can see, the problem is pretty much the same that we had previously. Now, uh, first of all, this might not be actually a problem because what if you really wanted to have something like um, something like this, right? It's um, It serves the purpose beautifully because they are all oriented in the same way. But what if you didn't want that to do? What if you wanted to them oriented again based on the normals of the sphere? And as you can see, when we scatter things, uh, the points they lose their their they lose their normals. So there is a node to remember the um, the normals for the copies. It's called facet. It should be dropped before the scatter, and we have to we have to enable post compute normals. Okay, I will enable the copy to points just for a second. And I go back to our facet. And uh, so the sphere has the normals that are looking well, outwards. Um, where is it uh, that are looking outwards of our geometry, as you can see. So if we want to orient our objects based on these normals, we go to our facet node and enable post compute normals and they got oriented. So you could say 
uh, problem solved. Now, uh, of course, if you make some sort of uh, adjustments to the sphere, let's say you want to move the sphere around and destroy it uh, using the mounting node, which we are using extensively for a reason, because I usually do it with attribute VOP, but this is not the course about attributes, so I'm sorry, my bad. Anyway, um, so we have our boxes oriented with normals that were created um, with this mounting node. We write it down as a, uh, with a facet, enabling the post-compute normals. And that makes it remember how the things were oriented. Again, if we make it like bigger, it kind of starts to look like a... Um, I don't know. Someone might like it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like it, but it's not the point of this, uh, of this lesson. So there you go. Orienting things on circles on um, on lines on any geometry you might imagine again if i disable this by pressing the bypass you can see that i oriented just um from uh, along the you could say the y-axis if i unbypass this it gets oriented by the normals so there you go um again polyframe to orient by just the things that are represented by the edges or by the polygons and facet to orient by the normals of the previous geometry so um, if you're not really getting what's happening um, just play it play with it yourself i know this can be a bit too much like normals schnormals you know what i'm saying uh, possibly you just want to do cool stuff but I would say this is kind of important to understand before uh, we move forward. So try orienting your things, try creating copies of your things and making them behave the way you want. And um, yeah, uh, have fun with this. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure, hopeful it was helpful for you. Uh, if you like what you've seen, press the like button. Uh, if you wanna follow and see what we are having more on the information of getting started with Houdini and we will have more and with attributes uh, click the subscribe button to not miss any other new videos and uploads anyway um, hope you have fun hope you have a good day see you later and goodbye